本日は Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us for this joint press conference despite inclement weather. And furthermore, I would like to appreciate for very short notice and a rather inconvenient time in which this meeting is being held. At 1600 this afternoon, Toyota Motor Corporation and Daihatsu Corporation decided on the a further collaboration and joint development of small cars, and we are holding the press conference for that. On the stage are, first of all, Akio Toyoda, president of Toyota Motor Corporation, and representing Daihatsu Corporation is Masanori Mitsui. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have remarks by both presidents. Good evening, and thank you all very much for attending our press conference. At such short notice, I am very sorry for any inconvenience the timing of this event may have caused. I'd like to tell you about the reasoning that led us to make this decision. Toyota and Daihatsu have frequently held discussions and shared opinions on the topic of sustainable growth. Last autumn, we told Daihatsu that we wanted to strengthen the relationship between our two companies in order to enable us both to make ever better cars. President Mitsui from Daihatsu might have been a bit taken aback at first, but as we kept talking, he told me that he hoped to maintain Daihatsu's unique approach to manufacturing, but that, on the other hand, the company's resources would limit his ability to expand the scope of the business, embrace the next wave of technologies, and improve competitiveness. Daihatsu is a company whose independence and self-support I have always respected, and it was clear to me that President Mitsui's priority as a leader was to achieve global competitiveness no matter what, and to make sure that his company can grow sustainably. I believe that President Mitsui made this decision out of consideration for all of Daihatsu's stakeholders, including employees, suppliers, dealers, customers, and investors. And I said decision he made for the sake of the future of Daihatsu as someone who has spent his entire career with Daihatsu. He has given everything to the company and no one embodies its values better than him. As a fellow leader, that means a great deal to me. I honestly believe that maintaining what President Mitsui calls Daihatsu's unique approach to manufacturing is one of the utmost importance to the entire Toyota group as we continue with our efforts to make ever better cars. My experience with Toyota and Lexus has given me the firm belief that brands are built on trust, which has to be earned. Good brands take time to cultivate, which is why the brands that stick in your mind are the ones with his heritage and stories. Daihatsu has been doing business for 109 years. I believe that I understand and appreciate the value of their brand as well as anyone possibly can. The Daihatsu brand will have a key position equal to that of Toyota and Lexus in our efforts to make ever better cars. Of course, we at Toyota also have plenty of issues that we must overcome in order to achieve sustainable growth. Implementing the Toyota new global architecture has once again made us aware of the difficulties involved in manufacturing small cars. At the same time, the importance of small cars is increasing. As we face ever greater environmental issues the world over, and as emerging markets continue their inevitable growth, there are many things we have chosen to focus on as a company. In certain regions like North America, our strength lies in 
in the mid-side sedan segment and above. More generally, we have a good track record in our development of technologies, particularly environmental technologies. However, I have frequently worried that we haven't managed to make our presence felt in the small car segment. Unless we gain the know-how necessary to better develop small cars, we may deprive ourselves of the chance to make crucial breakthroughs. Furthermore, Daihatsu has the benefit of a spontaneous and independent nature. It's the best kind of honest, unpretentious company with a culture of being down to earth and respecting the work done on the front lines. I believe they may be in possession of something that Toyota has lost sight of. So I truly feel that we have a lot to learn from them. We at Toyota are fixated on the need to be able to cover all of our own bases. You might say we are obsessed with self-sufficiency. So on one hand, while we have a long, incredible history of producing small vehicles ourselves, on the other hand, our desire to go it alone has prevented us from achieving our full potential in terms of global competitiveness. So naturally, this decision was a difficult one to make. In the end, the only reason we could make such a monumental decision was because we are talking about entrusting part of that session to none other than Daihatsu. Toyota and Daihatsu first began to collaborate in 1967 over a period of, of almost 50 years. Our two companies have walked hand in hand, growing alongside one another while respecting each other's independence and competing on a friendly basis. This is the essence of collaboration in the Toyota Group, and we are able to entrust this much of our small car business to Daihatsu because they have stood beside us for such a long time. Daihatsu excels at the kind of engineering that is needed in order to make affordable and high-quality products and the company has thrived in the fiercely competitive and restrictive mini-vehicle segment. Going forward, small cars will continue to be the source of Daihatsu's competitiveness. This is an opportunity for us both to stop feeling that we need to go it alone and trust each other to take full advantage of our respective strength. In other words, we can now focus on our core competencies. That, I believe, is the key to achieving and sustaining global competitiveness. This is the kind of thing I have in mind when I talk about achieving sustainable growth through true competitiveness and about making better cars. I would now like to pass the baton to Daihatsu President Masanori Mitsui, who has been and will continue to be our partner as Toyota, Daihatsu, and our entire group join together in forging a path toward the future. Good evening, everyone. I would like to express my thanks to all of you for attending tonight, despite being given so little notice. It's good to see so many of you here this evening. As you all know, we at Daihatsu have focused on the business model, specializing around small cars, primarily in what is known here as the mini vehicle segment. In recent years, we have developed models such as the Mira Ease, which combines an affordable pricing and excellent fuel economy, the Tanto and High Jet, which were created through concerted efforts to offer the features and performance sought by our customers, and the Isla for Indonesia and Asia for Malaysia, which, like our Japan market models, represent our dedication to meeting the needs and preferences of local customers. Through the development of these vehicles, we have aimed to become the manufacturer closest to the consumer. At the same time, I believe that we have succeeded with all of our efforts to hone and improve the unique manufacturing processes that small cars require, from Daihatsu Motor Kyushu's Orita second plant, which was the first to adopt the concept of simple, slim, compact SSC, to our plants in Indonesia and Malaysia that have become highly competitive thanks to the steps we have taken to be the very best in those countries. We have achieved a great deal. We also have a long history of 
joining projects with Toyota, including production under contract since the 1960s, joint development since 2004, and provision of vehicles on an OEM basis. We have always used these projects as the most appropriate means of addressing our respective needs at the time. Recently, we have been working to develop the ability to operate on a truly global scale and to meet the ever-growing challenges and societal needs presented by the next wave of technologies. These include compliance with environmental and safety regulations, electrification of powertrains, automated driving and connected technologies. Performing in these areas will be the key to our continued growth, and we are aware that we will soon find ourselves in a position where the necessary resources will exceed those allowed by the scope of our business. This led us to arrive at one conclusion. If we want to overcome the upheaval in our business environment and the fierce competition to develop new technologies and emerge stronger than ever before, we must dramatically strengthen our collaboration with Toyota, working our way forward by making ever better small cars under a joint strategy. These are the three concrete fields for a future strategic collaboration small cars, technology, and operations. In terms of small cars, part of our domestic and international strategy has been to develop and market similar sibling models like the Daihatsu Boon and Toyota Paso or the Daihatsu Senior and Toyota Avanza. Going forward, we will focus on differentiating those designs and specifications somewhat in order to better fulfill the needs of our respective customers. In order to do this, we'll work on further honing our development of vehicles that meet the specific needs of customers in their local markets. Put simply, we will both build ever better cars that fully leverage the unique strengths of our own brands. The second area covered by our collaboration is technology. The aim is to begin working together on new technologies in the initial conceptual stages, combining Toyota's world-leading research into cutting-edge technologies with Daihatsu's expertise in miniaturization and lowering costs. I hope that this shared strategy will create a synergistic effect that benefits both Toyota and Daihatsu customers, whereby we can bring cutting-edge technologies to market in small cars and and mini vehicles earlier and more affordably. The third area of collaborations will be in operations. In emerging markets, Daihatsu will show leadership and offer its own expertise to assist in the growth and development of operations. To ensure that we have the necessary adaptability and efficiency, we will use each other's manufacturing bases we will also work to improve the speed and effectiveness of the development, procurement, and production processes that underlie our operations from the planning stages onwards. These new collaborations will enable us to provide even better products and services than before, while also offering them earlier and at a better price than our competitors. We will also be able to demonstrate our strength in manufacturing and craftsmanship in light of the global shift toward smaller cars, particularly in emerging markets. Over the last 10 years, we have overhauled many of the core aspects of our business, both in terms of streamlining our corporate structure and in terms of improving our products R&D and manufacturing. With all of that behind us, we see this as the perfect opportunity to cement our relationship with Toyota, and by so doing, to embark on a new period of growth and elevate the Daihatsu brand to a global standard. 
Daihatsu has been around for 109 years, but I believe we have now found a course of action that will enable us to continue our growth for the next 100 years. Becoming a wholly owned subsidiary means that Daihatsu will be delisted from the stock exchange, but I am confident that we can show our shareholders why we made this decision by, prov by proving that this is the best way forward for Daihatsu's growth. Over the last 10 years, President Toyoda has watched over our structural reforms. He has visited our plants and driven our cars. He understands our strength and challenges. He has continued to discuss our potential with us from a shared perspective. So, as I hand over again to President Toyoda, I would like to convey my sincere gratitude. Thank you very much, President Mitsui. Toyota and Daihatsu will be closer than ever as we encounter new challenges. And we will take things one step at a time identifying issues as they come into view. Combining our capabilities and working toward a common goal, our companies will face these issues together and overcome them together. It's my hope that 10 or 20 years down the line, people will see this decision as the right one. Thank you. Thank you very much. From here on, I would like to entertain questions from the floor. Uh, we plan to have Q&A session for 30 minutes, and we are not planning to have any media scrum after this. So if you have any questions, please take this opportunity. And for the microphone to be brought to you, uh, please raise your hand and please identify yourselves and the question and to whom the question is addressed. To the person on this side of the room, please. Takechi of Mainichi newspaper. Thank you for this opportunity. To each of the presidents, to both the presidents, I have two questions each. Two questions each. Uh, for the past half a century, you have been operating as a partnership. Uh, and Daihatsu was once uh, consolidated uh, as a subsidiary, and this is another important milestone for both companies. And there may be various beliefs and observations as CEO of the company and also some personal observations and views. And therefore, if you could share that with us, that would be very much appreciated. And this is addressed to both of our companies. Now, in 1998, Daihatsu became a consolidated subsidiary. And after that, why now have we decided to uh, turn Daihatsu into a wholly owned subsidiary? Looking at the entire world operating environment, uh, the decision must have been based upon medium and long term perspective. But I would appreciate each uh, president describing the reason why this timing was selected. So let me start. Uh, responding to that question, and there are three elements. In the case of Toyota, and I often say this in many different fora, Toyota is really not good at alliance. Toyota is a company that's not good at alliance. That's my personal understanding, and I think it is generally believed so in the society. Although Toyota is not really good at alliance, but at the same time, once Toyota is a part of a single team aiming at the same goal, we are very good at working together with a partner. I'm confident about that. This time now, we have decided uh, to join hands with Daihatsu becoming wholly owned subsidiary of Toyota, and we are going to entrust the very important business of us, that is small car business, to Daihatsu. And this was made possible only because the partner was Daihatsu. As I mentioned in my earlier remarks, the first stage in which uh, we uh, had this alliance uh, that happened in 1967, and that was based upon maybe mutual aid assistance. And the second stage was uh, the collaboration for expansion, and uh, that happened in 1982. And after that, we accelerated or activated the joint projects, and since uh, 
about 2010, uh, Daihatsu uh, enhanced, stepped up uh, its efforts to be uh, self-supportive or self-reliant. So this decision this time represents the fifth stage. So in the past 50 years or so, at different stages, we learned from each other on the practical stage, understanding each other's strengths as well as weaknesses. And because we have that history together, we are now able to move on to this fifth stage, in my view. And at the same time, oftentimes, uh, when Toyota joins hands uh, into alliance or partnership, and in the case of uh, relationship with the suppliers, oftentimes that uh, Toyota is referred to as taking the condescending attitude, looking down at the partner. partner. However, Mr. Shirane, the president of uh, Toyota East Japan, and Mr. Amimoto, the Toyota Auto Bodies, both of these companies are wholly on subsidiaries. And when we discuss with them, they say that, of course, it may be a problem for Toyota taking a condescending attitude. But at the same time, the problem is also with us. That is to say, we tend to take the self-deprecating attitude. Those are the comments coming from CEOs of those subsidiaries. Theories. But in the past few years, we have developed a track record, being able to talk at same wavelengths and looking at the same levels. One difference is that uh, Daihatsu has the history which is longer than Toyota. The, the brand has history of 109 years. And by joining Toyota Group, it can shine even better than in the past. I would like to make every effort sincerely so that Daihatsu can be said as such a company that is shown even better after becoming wholly owned subsidiary in the future years. And I'm determined to do what uh, I need to do to that end. Thank you very much. From my side, Daihatsu is going to become 100% subsidiary of Toyota. And I would like to first of all refer to the most important objective and purpose. And that relates to both brands in each of the markets of countries, that is to say, Toyota brand and Daihatsu brand, and we intend to strengthen the small vehicles for both brands. And there are three important keys or necessities. That is to say, to make the differences of Toyota brand Daihatsu clearer, and also, secondly, share the same strategy, and thirdly, to accelerate the speed of decision-making of the management. Having the same strategy, uh, making clearer the differences between both brands, we would like to deliver the unique characteristics of both brands to our customers. Now, uh, you asked why now? On my part, and as I also mentioned in my own remarks earlier, in the past 10 years, we at Daihatsu have been working very hard on changing the structure of business. And we now have various items of those structural reform being fully built in place for the structure. And I thought of what would be the next stage of our growth. And when I was thinking of that, I was told that Toyota also has the similar challenges. And when I heard about that, I thought this may give us a very good opportunity, and that created the um, joining of our minds on both sides. May I move on to the next question, please? Yes, the, uh, the person with the hand raised there. Thank you, Kishimoto from Yomiuri newspapers. First of all, my question is to President Mitsui. Earlier, you've been talking about uh, differentiating the two brands, and uh, President Toyoda uh, talked about uh, the fact that Daihatsu uh, is a company that uh, places importance on independence and autonomy. Now, by uh, making the Daihatsu brand a wholly owned subsidiary, would uh, can you really deny the possibility of the Daihatsu brand dissipating or disappearing? appearing in the future. And if the brand will continue, then what sort of a brand do you want to grow the brand into going forward, Mr. Mitsui? Also, Mr. Toyoda, President Toyoda, you've been uh, talking about uh, the autonomy and independence of the Daihatsu brand. Uh, so currently, how do you value or evaluate the Daihatsu brand? These are my questions. 
Thank you. Now then, may I begin to talk about the future of the Daihatsu brand going forward? In a nutshell, the Daihatsu brand will, of course, continue. And it will not continue as is. Uh, we will evolve the brand. And uh, this may not be a, a very good example, how it, but my feeling is the following. For example, it's like the mini for the BMW to become a presence that can provide an added value to the world. We want to grow the Daihatsu brand into a global brand with that kind of added value. That's my feeling about the Daihatsu brand. Uh, so could you then talk about how you regard the Daihatsu brand? Well, the Daihatsu brand and, uh, will never, never disappear. Let me assure you of that. And on the reverse, as President uh, Mitsui said, it will be like the mini for BMW. And that's, I think, the sort of level that we should aim for. And the Daihatsu brand, in my view, is, well, I think it comes in two stages. In the past, the mini vehicle, or K, uh, there was an age when it was something that people tolerated. Uh, the K or the uh, mini vehicle, you know, if you, uh, for example, uh, you know, take a girl out on a date with a mini vehicle, you know, she would not date with you. But after that, there was an age when the mini vehicle won citizenship. For example, the Mira East, most recently, when that vehicle came out, the mini vehicle won citizenship. And now, it's become a very fun, enjoyable vehicle. It comes in many forms and shapes. And of course, uh, mini vehicles, the people tend to equate that with the mini commercial vehicles or the mini vans, mini trucks. But mini vehicles are now very fun to drive, and it's become a, a public transportation system of sorts in the outlying uh, areas. Uh, so now, from a public transport, it's you know gained an element of fun to drive. Now, we want to bring that one step forward Farther and produce the Daihatsu brand. And I think we can do it. If we can do that you know, based on this uh, collaboration, and then the Toyota and, and the Lexus brand for Toyota and the Daihatsu brand, if I think we should be able to make clear the differences between these three brands. So I think that we'll be able to make ever better cars, even more than before, now that we have joined hands. You know, and you know, people used to question, what is the Toyota brand? What is the Lexus brand? What is the Daihatsu brand? I think that that can be made very clear through focus on core competences that would make uh, it easier for everyone at both companies to work. And we'll be able to uh, hammer out very clear and understandable messages to our clients. So it may take some time, but I do hope that you look forward to these developments. Thank you. Yes. Let us move on to the next question. Oh, Hinata of Asahi newspaper. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I have three questions. And number one, in terms of Toyota's global strategy, you have Toyota, Lexus, and in the United States, you have also Scion brands. But these are two major brands, Toyota and Lexus. In the case of Daihatsu, your focus is on Indonesia and Malaysia thus far. But now you have become wholly owned subsidiary of Toyota. Would that accelerate all of a sudden the global di business deployment of Daihatsu, and in that context, what sort of model of vehicle would you like to introduce? That's the first question. And secondly, in terms of a Toyota brand, Daihatsu has a sort of a, year, year, a vehicle equivalent to Yaris. And including the global strategic vehicles such as Yaris, is Toyota going to entrust that business to Daihatsu as well? Uh, what is the position of Daihatsu in that sense within Toyota? And thirdly, Mr. Mitsui, president of Daihatsu, mentioned the limitation or shortage of resources as Daihatsu tries to to deploy business globally. Now, you will become the key company in the small uh, cars, and you'll be joining hands with Toyota starting in the initial conceptual stage. But what are you going to make up for the um, 
resources available, uh, which is in short supply at this moment? Those are the three questions. Thank you very much. Let me respond to the first question. And uh, deploying business globally, what does that mean? Does it accelerate the business all of a sudden on the global basis? Is that what we are intending to do? Was the purport of a question? Of course, if we can, we would like to accelerate our global business very rapidly. But to elevate our brand uh, into a global brand status all of a sudden may be somewhat diff difficult. We need to enhance and accumulate our strength as we do that. And that will take time, will not uh, occur overnight. But in the ultimate analysis, in my view, the Daihatsu brand will be recognized uh, by the society and public general, and once that is the case, I would like to bring Daihatsu brand vehicles any country in which Daihatsu is recognized as an important brand. Of course, Indonesia and Malaysia, but other than these two countries, there are countries in the markets where they truly want to have Daihatsu brand vehicles, and we would like to deliver our vehicles to such markets. The third question related to the resource availability as we try to go global, and your concern is well taken. But as I explained to you earlier, uh, we spent the past decade uh, changing and reforming the structure of our business, including development, production. We wanted uh, to have the strategy that allows speedy development and in the lean sort of a development and uh, production. And that what we have been trying to do, and we would like to use the outcome, the essence of that in our global deployment of business at the same time. And at the same time, we think that the resources we have is not enough for us to be called a truly global company. And so any shortage we might see in our resources it also uh, includes the uh, necessary development of human resources uh, as we try to deploy business. So including that aspect, we would like to uh, create those capabilities and resources so that we can accelerate the global business. In the case of Toyota, we are now engaged in uh, TNGA. We have conducted a complete overhaul of a car making, and we are embracing the totally new challenge in this regard. That means trying to conduct far-reaching change of a small car making. And when we try to do that, we came to the conclusion that it is a very effective means of relying on the strength of a Daihatsu in the small car development because Toyota's product strength, the manufacturing strength, is lying in the middle segment sedan, moving from there to the smaller vehicles, moving from larger cars to the smaller cars. But in the Keihatsu, Daihatsu, this important strength is to leverage the, uh, its capabilities it cultivated in building and developing small cars, uh, bringing that to the middle-sized uh, vehicles, and therefore moving from the uh, smaller cars upward. So we think that we need to expand our sphere, starting from those middle-sized segment into smaller segment. And rather than doing moving into the similar direction separately, we came to the conclusion that it's better for us to join hands. So wherever we can entrust to others, we can entrust business to the other party, so that we can truly leverage the strength of each companies. And to do so, we came to the conclusion that it is necessary to operate under the joint strategy aiming at the same objective. In a sense, we had I had many opportunities of uh, working together with Daihatsu, and through those experiences, I realized that Daihatsu is very speedy in making decisions. The sort of things that requires a few months in Toyota can be done in a few weeks in Daihatsu. So this sort of sense of speed, the respect to whatever is done at the front lines of operation is something that Toyota can really learned from Daihatsu, and that is indeed very important for Toyota as well. As Mr. Toyota referred to in TNGA in his 
answer to the question. The TNGA and the part of that, that is to say the small cars and mini vehicles, rather than taking the approach of moving from TNGA to small cars, but rather using the know-how and expertise that we have cultivated, developing uh, small cars can be used as the resources that can create something unique, distinctively uh, strong to us. So this is somewhat different from TNGA. This is the uniquely Daihatsu approach to manufacturing cars. So we can call it DNGA, right? Yes, I name it today, right. We call it DNGA starting today. Thank you. The person in the middle? <coughs> the front? Yes. Ito from Nikan Kogyo Industry News. A question, uh, two questions to President uh, Toyoda. It could be 1.5 questions to be accurate. This may be a repeat, but you talked about focus on core competencies. And uh, well, you said that you'll have to shed that feeling that we need to go it alone, that obsession. But uh, Toyota, oh, what are the challenges that forces Toyota to have to stop feeling? that you need to go it along all your challenges. Also, I think you said earlier that uh, the mini vehicle has become a fun to drive car, but uh, since this is a good opportunity, if I could ask uh, you what Daihatsu cars you prefer or you like, if you could share that with me. Uh, could I answer as Morizo? <laughs> well, as Morizo plus as the president of Toyota, wearing both hats as the president of Toyota. Toyota. <laughs> I like the Avanza uh, Senia, which is uh, which is uh, Avanza, uh, Toyota brand Avanza, and Daihatsu brand is Senia, which is uh, sold in Indonesia. When I was the uh, general manager for Asia business, I asked Daihatsu uh, to co-develop with us a, a national car for Indonesia, uh, for the Asian market, and so we worked together. We brought together our strength and our uh, know-how to develop this car. And so this car is the top-selling car for us in Indonesia. And so this is a car that I feel the most deepest affection for. But wearing now my uh, hat as Moriso, I think you probably expect me to say Kopen, but actually it's uh, Mira East. Well, earlier I said that the mini vehicle has uh, actually broken through, has achieved a breakthrough, and the Mira East was the vehicle that made me feel that way. When I first drove the Mira East, you know, the groomy, uh, very comfortable interior, and when I stepped on the gas, you know, it made me feel like I had started off a dialogue with the car and that sense of unity with the vehicle. And I think that was the car, the moment that I totally changed my outlook on the mini vehicle. Uh, so, of course, the coupon is good, but uh, to be very frank, for me, the Mira is I thought was a threat at that time for me. I felt it was a threat. Also, it made me marvel at the potential of the mini vehicle. And Copen. Well, the, uh, it's 86. I, I like it. But, you know, I think um, probably, you know, it may have been, uh, the Hachiroku may, you know, may be better, but uh, the Mira East is the car that really is uh, supports the Daihatsu business. What was your next question? Yes, in focus on core competencies, uh, the, what are some of the challenges that uh, made Toyota have stop feeling that you need to go it alone? I'm not, we're not going to stop it, but and of course that feeling of self-sufficiency uh, still remains very strongly with Toyota. Uh, so now that uh, in entrusting our small car business to Daihatsu, of course internally, you know, there are people who said that we have a long history uh, of uh, uh, you know, self-sufficiency in uh, the small cars. We have our own history. But I think the key is that we need and want to develop ever better cars. And when you want to make ever better cars, there are cars that you can develop, ever better cars that you can develop only by Toyota. 
and others that uh, we can develop with Daihatsu. And when we join hands, then we can see new scenes, new sites. There will be new chemistry uh, which will be born. Uh, so uh, by sh being able to share the same perspective together, I'm, you know, I'm really looking forward to what sort of new cars this uh, new collaboration will give birth to. And I'm very excited about this. And I do hope that that same excitement can be felt uh, or uh, seen in the market as well as by our customers. Thank you. Well, earlier uh, the president talked about Copen. Well, I knew what well, I heard President uh, Toyota talk more enthusiastically about Copen earlier. Just before we launched the Copen, uh, we brought the Copen to the Fuji Speedway and had President Toyota, Toyota ride and drive the Copen. I uh, sat uh, next to him in the car, and the president said, Oh, this is a mini vehicle? Are you sure? He said, there are not many cars that will take you from one specific point to another, and the point that you can do this with a mini vehicle was wonderful, he said. And I was really, really happy to hear those words, and uh, I uh, even shared those words uh, in, uh, internally with my employees, and it gave us the ammunition to work for better cars. Thank you, you know, that's true. Um, well, I often go to Hokkaido, the Shibetsu test course, which is Daihatsu's test course. I've probably driven that course even more frequently than President Mitsui, for sure. And the first car I met there was Kopen. And the second encounter was in the Fuji Speedway. Uh, President uh, Mitsui rode with me in the Kopen just before its launch. Uh, we made a few laps. And, and it's true that I, I continued to drive that in you know, a car. Uh, I didn't want to get off, uh, but the, f it, the roof was open, but still we could, you know, have a dialogue without having to yell at each other. And uh, yes, I think uh, we used that uh, footage or that message, uh, not at the press conference, uh, but uh, at other occasions. So you know, I'd like to continue with those kinds of experiences uh, going forward to promote good cars, to promote Daihatsu brand cars, you know, more strongly as Moriso, the driver. So I'd like to play that role as well if there is need going forward. Since the scheduled closing time is approaching, so I would like to uh, have only two questions after this. Person in the front row, please. Yamada of Toyo Kezai Magazine. Um, only one question is allowed, so one combined question is something that I'm going to ask. In terms of the uh, alliance relationship, you said that it will take time, spend enough time. I mean, spending enough time uh, will produce something good, but at the same time, the world is moving very rapidly, so taking too much time uh, could be a negative as well. In the context of alliance or partnership, uh, what are the merits and demerits of those? And although it was not questioned thus far, but I would like to ask the following, but earlier uh, your potential relationship with Suzuki was reported, and so when considering those alliance, the mass media or journalists over a short run tend to uh, expect something something big coming out in the short time as the product or result of such alliance. And probably what you are trying to convey is not something that is going to be produced in this uh, case. So including that aspect, uh, could you give us some comment? In terms of the results, the delivery or development of a better car would be the development uh, result, and also the employees producing such cars, and also the dealers and suppliers, and also the community supporting our efforts uh, to create ever better cars having a smile. So that's the result that we would like to see. So rather than project, but uh, I have always talked about the steady growth. Uh, for the sustainable growth as the uh, tree trunk uh, creates annual growth rings. It's not a single solitary fl flower in the vase, but 
the joint effort, the joint flowers, we will be making a new start. What would be the demerit of spending too much time? Uh, allowing too much time would allow other people to come up with many pretexts and excuses. The society and the world at large is changing and moving very rapidly. Of course, uh, having advisement is very important, but based upon such advisement and thorough thought, bold decision and action must be taken, and both of our companies are good at continuous improvement, the Kaizen, so taking and leveraging those Kaizen aim at always a better car to come up with the successful outcome of the joining hands is necessary. So we need to embrace new challenges speedily. And that sense of speed is something that Toyota as a big company can learn most importantly from Daihatsu in my view. Advantage or benefits that we have seen as a result of a long time spent in Alliance, I think, is the relationship, trust, bound by trust by, between these two companies have been strengthened ever better. And so rather than negative aspect, I can just think of those positive elements that is strengthened mutual ties based upon trust between these companies. So the next one will be the final question. Miyamoto of Chunichi newspaper. I'm sorry this is an unrelated topic, but ta uh, regarding the uh, airbag recall of Takata, Takata held a meeting today and um, asked uh, for support, including uh, the sharing of the uh, financial burden. Uh, so if you could discuss this. I know to have to answer that question at the end of this uh, press conference, you know, it's a waste. Uh, any other questions? OK, one more question. Of Kudaira of uh, Nihon Geizai Shimbun. Earlier, at the outset in your remarks, uh, you mentioned that approach was made by uh, President Toyoda autumn last year. Why was it last autumn? As I recall, in May last year, I think you announced the alliance with Mazda. So from the internal perspective at Toyota, you had the reorganization of a body manufacturers, and then there was reorganization of the manufacturers of a critical powertrain components, and there are other alliances as well. So in the context of those various internal discussions on potential alliance, uh, alliance uh, you talked about the potential alliance with Toyota and how you examined the operating environment. I don't uh, remember clearly when and uh, in what manner we had the internal discussion. About two years ago or so, since then, uh, since I became president, and not just me personally, but Toyota, and now uh, enter the stage where we can move forward and looking uh, toward the future. And looking at that, probably at some time in the announcement of financial results, I think I used the phrase saying that we have now entered the phase of implementation. There are many things that had been considered in internally, although considerations or studies had been going on, but we were not able to take the step forward. But because people had worked so hard, uh, we reached the stage where we are fully prepared to uh, actually take those concrete steps. But at the same time, with Thai Hats constantly, uh, we have discussions continuously at our own levels and at practical levels through various projects we are working on together. Discussions and conversations are always going on. But in a better way, we started talking about building ever better cars, and also we started talking about whether there are better ways of joining hands for both of us to do business and to compete on the global scene. And those considerations and the situations led to 
our decision as well as today's press conference. Thank you very much. This concludes the joint press conference of today, and this will be followed by photo sessions. So those of you who have photo cameras, please get ready for this photo session. Thank you. And for this photo session part, uh, I would like to invite those photographers in the forward area to shoot the photos. And late after that, we will give uh, different opportunities for those in the back of the room to have the similar opportunity for photo taking. Thank you. Now those photographers at the front have you finished shooting, so I would like to invite those photographers in the back to move forward for this photo session. Thank you. それでは撮影以上にさせていただきたいと思います。どうもありがとうございました。え、本日はこれにて共同記者会見を終了させていただきます。本日はお忙しい中、お疲れ様でした。